expectations for myself going into the draft. Um, not as high as, you know, going number one or number two round, but, you know, I was thinking anywhere from the third to the fifth round that I could possibly land uh, for somebody who actually, you know, in, 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 in those rounds, that's where kind of somebody wants you, you know, to be there. They see something valuable in you. Um, to me, like the sixth and seventh round, it's just kind of they just someone's best player off the board. I, if he just get drafted, I'll be happy, you know, and but when his name wasn't called, I, I could, I mean, I felt for him, you know, like I was pissed and I was hurt. Shoot, the next day he didn't get called again. I called Zeke. <laughs> I called his agent. Like, what the hell is going on? I just remember being with my family and friends on the second day when I thought, you know, I was going to get drafted and didn't work out. And I was just super bummed. Um, so at that point, I just thought that I might not, I, I might not even get drafted. You know, it's like, hey, we don't know why he's dropping. Got to talk to him on the phone. Of course, we were both crying, and I was like, man, all you need, just like any other time in your life, you know, you play with a chip on your shoulder, and you, all you need is an opportunity. So the third day, I, I got the call from, you know, Philadelphia. Chip Kelly got on the phone. Um, he couldn't believe that I, I didn't get drafted yet. And he said, we're going to take you and, you know, pick 218 that we have. Uh, so pack your bags, get ready to come to Philly. And, you know, that moment right there, it's pretty special, you know, just knowing that, you know, I had an opportunity to be in the league. But, you know, I was still pretty pissed. You know, I was, I was pissed that, um, you know, so many – so many players, and even I look now, like so there's so many players that are picked ahead of me that are just not out the league. That ain't been in the league for years. You know what I mean? And it just, you know, it, and you know, it's kind of still been like that since I've been in the league, you know, being the overlooked one or being whatever you want to call it. You know, at this point, I don't give a damn, you know, what people think about me as a person or as a player. I'm going to do what I do on the football field anyway. And so, and let my game speak for itself because my game has spoke, spoken for itself since I've been in the league. You know, you can say whatever you want the last four, the, the first four years, but the last four years, you know, I've been one of the top safeties in this league. So, um, you know, that's just, it, I've been an underdog my whole life, man. And so it, it ain't nothing new for me to see, um, see people project, you know, their numbers or project their opinions on who is this or who is that. Um, I know what I've done in this game, and I know what I'm going to continue to do in this game. That's the, all that matters to me. Uh, I look back, and I was probably one of the hardest, say probably one of the hardest, uh, one of them, um, like times, I guess you could say, of my, my lives. Yeah, I'd never been to the East Coast before um, going to Philadelphia. I, uh, I didn't know what to expect. I was going on a team with... Michael Vick with LaShawn McCoy, with Deshaun Jackson, you know, um, just some some dudes that have been established in the league a long time and guys who I played up with on Madden all the time, you know. And I was just kind of, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I just knew I, that I always go back on one thing. I always know, I always fall back like when I'm, when I'm in a new setting or when I'm in a new uh, area, just put your head down and work, you know, that's it. Just end the day, no matter what anybody says, no matter what anybody does, just put your head down, be on time um, and, 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 and work. Uh, you know, don't make the same mistakes twice. You It's football, you're gonna make mistakes. Don't make the same mistakes twice, you know, um, be coachable. Just trying to do all the right things in order to build trust. I think that's a huge key when you get to the league is starting to build that trust with not only your coaches, but your teammates around you. And so, um, you know, just trying to build that trust with the guys around me. And I, and, and it was, it, you know, it, it was a good experience. You know, it was tough because, you know, it, it was just a tough time in Philadelphia, dude. Uh, I made the team, um, but, you know, I would dress one week. I would, I would not dress the next week. I would dress one other week. And then week six came around and, you know, I got, I got released by Philadelphia. Yeah, everything happens for a reason. I mean, just like everything else, from the draft, him getting picked. I mean, everything happens for a reason, you know, and, and that I'm going to continue to pray for him and, you know, just have faith that everything is going to work out. He just continue to grind and work hard. Um, the message does not change. I mean, it's still the same from, you know, when, when they were young. 
uh, you know, and uh, yeah, it's. I probably sound like a broken record to him, you know, but it, it doesn't change, you know. I prayed about, I, you know, I pray for him, you know, just making sure that he, you know he stays strong and have the the strength and the, you know, you know, for God to guide him, you know, because it. The the one thing that bothered me when he's up there is like um, he's by himself. He has no family. He doesn't have an entourage, you know. I mean, I'm not. You know, people's like, "Oh, aren't you going to move to Philadelphia?" Hell no, I'm not going to move to Philadelphia. Aren't you going to move to Cleveland? Why? It's cold as hell up there, right? And like, oh yeah, but your kid is there. Man. The first you could say the first year was probably the hardest and I always tell all the rookies that like your first year is always the hardest because you go from training um, you, before your senior season to your senior season to training for the combine um, to doing the combine all the all the pro day all the all-star games um, to going and writing the OTAs and the OTAs after OTAs you only have about two weeks left until you got training camp and then you got the whole season so your rookie year it's definitely, it's, it tests you. It tests a lot of, a lot of people. Uh, you're 21 years old, 20, uh, how old was I? 21, 22 years old in a setting like that, you know, trying to figure it out. It was tough. And I look back and, you know, I'm, you know, damn, like the 22 year old me was pretty damn mentally tough to be able to handle some of the shit that I was able to handle. So, um, you know, going, then going to Cleveland, uh, I had a little bit more of an opportunity there because actually that's what, they wanted me in the draft. Like if if I wasn't gonna get get drafted, Cleveland was gonna be a team that picked me up as an undrafted kid or undrafted free agent. And um, so I get there, learn the playbook, and next thing you know, I'm in the rotation. Like within weeks, I'm in the rotation at safety. Um, I come in on second second and long, third down situations. Um, I was starting on all phases, especially I was punt returning. You know what I mean? Like and but those were hard hard years too because we were we were just not very good at all um you know so it was hard to stay hard to stay motivated uh, when you're losing week after week after week uh, especially in a you know it's a new setting it's a new team so you didn't really get to kind of build that relationship with those guys during training camp um so it was just kind of getting your, your butt whooped and just kind of having to do it again the next week and do it again the week after that so um, but the year after that, we weren't any better. We uh, we lost almost every game. I think we were like three and thirteen. No bull crap. Um, the year after that, I think we were somewhat better. We might have went six and twelve, or uh, I'm sorry, six and ten. Uh, and then the year after that, my fourth year in Cleveland was the year I got hurt. Uh, you know, last ran my kidney week six. It was just kind of one of those one of those scary deals. Colquitt from out of his own end zone again. Stutter step comes back near side left. 45. He's got the sideline if they get a block, and they did. And it was a blindside block on Poyer. And to be honest with you, it was frightening. And Poyer is down without his helmet on and in a lot of pain. I can tell you this. It's no different than your kids. You're sitting here and watching your kid at a high school football field and your kid getting hurt at a high school, you know, game or little league or no different. You know, uh, the impact, I mean, watching it nationwide, I mean, your phone blows up and, you know, I just, Jordan, he, his pain tolerance is high. So when he's hurt, I know he's hurt, you know, and I didn't, I mean, I still, yeah, remember I was, yeah, I was really, uh, I was at, I wasn't at the game. I was here at Bubba's where I watched. Yeah, where I watched the game, and of course, uh, the whole place got quiet. You know, uh, I just remember going outside, just trying to watch, you know, TV to see if I see him get up. I mean, when I first saw him get hit, all I would say like, "Get up, get up, Jordan, get up," you know. And then he did get up, and I can just see him, with the facial expression he had, and I'm like, damn, he's hurt. He's hurt. So I already knew Tony, uh, Rachel's pops was over there, so I called him, and he's like, hey, and he was like, hey, I'll, I'll stay in touch. I text Julie, and like, hey, uh, have you heard anything? He's like, no. All right, so I, you know, uh, 
I just talked to Tony, and he's going to go to the hospital with him. Uh, like, and he'll keep us, keep in touch. So that was hard, you know, and uh, just trying to see if, if one of us needs to fly down there. Uh, yeah, I thought my career might have been over, uh, especially when the doctor told me that I wasn't going to be able to exercise for four months. Um, and so, like, I'm like, well, I mean, damn, by the time you're able to do that, like, you're going to be so far behind everybody else. Like, it's going to be, like, it's going to be hard as fuck. I'm sorry. It's going to be hard as hell to, to catch up. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Um, and so, like, I mean, when he told me that, I just, you know, that was the first year I actually earned the starting position. Um, you know, the year before was a guy got hurt in training camp. So, I, you know, I didn't necessarily feel like I earned it. But, you know, I was a starter. But, you know, I earned this position. And I was starting every game. And, you know, that that really kind of, like you said, it was a turning point just because I was able to really, uh, you know, if, if I look back at that moment, um, you know, it was a blessing in disguise in a sense. My, my wife was pregnant at the time um, and she had my daughter in December. So I was able to be there for her, um, be there, you know, obviously during the birth of, of Aaliyah and, you know, and spend that time with them during you know, during the time I was recovering, uh, I just remember coming back off of recovery and when the doctor told me I was finally cleared and able to work out, I put 135 on the bench press and I couldn't even, I couldn't even bench it after four months of not touching a weight, not running or anything. So I was like, man, this is, this is going to be tough, dude. Um, so I just started training, I started training down there in Florida, this, um, Pete Bomarito, shout out Pete, I know you're watching, uh, you know, and he just got, he, I mean, his facility, you know, high end facility just got me right, dude. Uh, I just worked, busting my butt to get back to where I needed to be to have an opportunity. I got a call in February from the Bills and they told me, uh, they wanted me to come in and, and compete. Um, you know, I kind of, I didn't really have any, any other options, but after I looked at their roster, I, I saw I had an opportunity to possibly come in and start. So, you know, I, that off season worked extremely hard. Um, and you know it was the hardest part was just uh was like not mentally knowing where i was at uh throughout the whole process of me like training to get better like i knew i was training to get better but i didn't know like if i was at the level that i needed to be i guess you could say How we doing? 